Unfortunately, this is what we're going to see in this video, partial derivatives. In most applications of calculus to the physical sciences, we model a quantity of interest with a function, and then we're interested in studying how this function varies. That is, we want to understand the rate of change of that function. So this is what we discussed last semester when we introduced the concept of derivatives. Well, the same is true here when we talk about functions of more than one variables. So let's take, for example, the case of the windshield function, which we introduced in a previous video. So that would be a function that depends on two quantities, namely the temperature and the speed of wind. So we might be interested in understanding how the windshield varies as we vary the temperature or the speed of wind. But here things are more complicated because we can vary these uh, two quantities in different ways. So what we usually do is keep one of them constant and vary the other one. So we could ask, if I vary the temperature but keep the, keep the speed of wind constant, how is the wind chill varying? Or I could ask if I vary the speed of wind but keep the temperature constant, how is the wind chill varying? Now this is precisely the idea of partial derivatives. Let me now define mathematically the partial derivatives of a function of two variables x and y. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x, which we denote by del f del x, so del here is a symbol that denotes partial derivative. We also write f with a uh, subscript uh, x to denote the partial derivative with respect to the variable x. So this is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h y minus f of x y divided by h. So this is the limit of the difference quotient, but only in the x variable. So what this is calculating is the rate of change of the function as you vary x and you keep y constant or y fixed. Right? So it's important to note here that this is a limit in a single variable. So this is different from the limit of uh, functions of two variables that we studied in a previous video. Here we're really only doing a limit in the x variable, keeping y fixed. Now, of course, you can define uh, in the same way the derivative, the partial derivative of the function with respect to y, uh, which is given by the limit of the difference quotient, where you're now uh, taking the rate of change in the y variable while keeping x fixed. Concretely, evaluating partial derivatives is not more difficult than evaluating ordinary derivatives, because in the end, del f del x means that you're evaluating the derivative of the function f with respect to the variable x while keeping y constant. So all you have to do is think of y as a constant and then just take the derivative with respect to x. And the same thing if you do del f del y, but now you're keeping the variable x constant and taking the derivative with respect to the variable y. So let me work through an example. Suppose that I consider the function of two variables given by x times y squared. And now I want to evaluate its partial derivative with respect to x and with respect to y. So let's first evaluate del f del x. So what is this? This is just taking the derivative of the function with respect to x, but keeping y constant. So I could write the derivative like this. And because y is a constant, I can pull it out of the derivative, and then I get just the derivative with respect to x of the variable x itself, which is just 1. So I would end up with the result being y squared. And similarly, if I want to calculate the derivative of f, the partial derivative of f with respect to the variable y, so here I want to calculate the derivative of x, y squared, I can treat x as a constant, so I could pull it out of the derivative, and I end up with the derivative of y squared, which is 2y, so the result would be 2 times x times y. We can also define higher partial derivatives by repeated applications of partial derivatives. So for example, you could take the second derivative of the function f with respect to x by applying the operator of del del x twice on my function. So I calculate the second derivative with respect to x, keeping y constant. 
But we can also have mixed partial derivatives. So mixed here means that I'm taking derivative with respect to two different variables, x and y. So what you do here is you first take the derivative with respect to x, x keeping y fixed, and then you take the derivative with respect to y of the result, keeping x fixed. All right, so just to be clear, let me calculate all four second order derivatives of my function x, y squared. So first I'm gonna calculate the second derivative with respect to the variable x. So that means I'm applying twice the operator del del x on my function, which is x, y squared. So let's evaluate the derivative inside first. So I'm keeping y constant and taking the derivative with respect to x. So that gives me y squared. And now you see here, I keep y constant and take a derivative with respect to x. So that's the derivative of a constant. So that's actually equal to zero. All right, so let's do the second one. So I'm gonna calculate the second derivative of the function with respect to y. So again, I'm just applying twice the operator of derivative with respect to y. So let's evaluate the derivatives inside. So I keep x constant, so that gives me x times the derivative of y squared with respect to y, which is 2y. So I get 2xy. And then I take the derivative with respect to y, keeping x constant. That gives me 2x. And now I have my two mixed second order derivative. So let's first calculate the, the derivative with respect to y inside and then with respect to x. So the derivative of xy squared with respect to y, keeping x constant, will give me 2y times x, so 2xy. And then I take the derivative with respect to x, keeping y constant, so that gives me 2y. And finally, I can calculate the other mixed derivative, so the derivative with respect to x first and then y. So I'll get the del del y outside and the del del x inside. So I keep, for the derivative inside, I'll keep y constant and calculate the derivative with respect to x, gives me y squared. And then I take the derivative with respect to y, which gives me 2y. And now you see that the two mixed derivatives are actually equal. Well, this is not a coincidence. Indeed, there is a very nice result called Clairaut's theorem that basically states that for most functions of interest, the mixed partial derivatives will be equal. So in other words, it doesn't matter in which order you take the derivatives. It doesn't matter whether you take the derivative with respect to x first or the derivative with respect to y first. Now the precise statement is that this will be true if the mixed partial derivatives exist and are continuous. But this is the case for most functions of interest. So in the examples that I had, the example that I had previously, so my function was x times y squared, and I did calculate the two mixed partial derivatives, I ended up with the statement that they were both equal to 2y, which is indeed continuous everywhere, so Clairaut's theorem applies. All right, so to summarize, what we've seen in this video is the definition of partial derivatives of a function of two variables, which calculate the rate of change of that function if you vary one variable, keeping the other one fixed. Now, it's easy to see how you can generalize that to functions of more than two variables. So you can calculate the derivative of such a function with respect to one variable by taking the derivative with respect to that variable, keeping everything else fixed. And to conclude this video, I want to mention one interesting thing. So when we introduced derivatives, ordinary derivatives of function of a single variable in uh, the last semester, we saw that the derivative calculates something very interesting geometrically, which is the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function. Well, it turns out that the partial derivatives also have a very interesting geometric meaning. And this is something we will explore in class. Stay tuned.